in today's uh, video i'll be continuing with the topic of uh, arpa uh, as you know arpa stands for automatic radar plotting aids and today's focus will be on causes of error in the range and bearing calculation by the arpa so i hope you have been watching my previous videos on the radars and arpa if not then the links to those videos are in the description section below please watch those videos as well along with this video to get a good understanding of uh, the ARPA and its various facets. So like I said, uh, today's focus is on uh, dealing with the causes of errors in range and bearing. And the causes that I will discuss today uh, will give an indication of uh, possible bearing and range errors and hence the limitations in calculation of the track accuracy of the target. So echo returned from a target is what the range and bearing information is based upon. So the first uh, cause of error in the calculation of range and bearing uh, refers to antenna backlash. And the antenna backlash is caused by the wind resistance effect on the antennas. It causes a bearing error of about plus or minus 0.2 of a degree the antennas are rated to operate in wind speeds up to 100 knots but they may suffer a backlash effect at higher wind speeds so that will result in a somewhat difference of the actual bearing to the bearing calculated by the arpa to about plus or minus 0.2 uh, you may think this is a small figure but uh, sometimes this may be a bit significant a way to go about this is to probably get bearings of two or more targets and plot the ship's position based on uh, more than two bearings and the intersection of that will give you a position of your ship. If you are uh, worried about the collision avoidance then of course you have to take into account that a uh, little bit error is incorporated in the bearing so the action that you take to avoid collision should be bold enough and large enough and substantial enough to have enough CPA to account for this bearing error. Uh, the next uh, cause of error is the target glint and this is caused by movement of a vessel in a seaway and also the pulse striking different parts of a ship. On a large ship this can cause error or range errors of plus minus to about 30 meters and random bearing errors that cannot be uh, calculated or uh, stipulated here. So they can be random bearing errors uh, that uh, you cannot put a value to. Then we have the unstable platform which is caused by the own ship rolling and the antenna moving out from the center line of the ship which can further cause a quadrantal bearing error. So the bearing error can become four times to that of the um, minimum error that you normally experience. Then you have the squint which is caused by the horizontal radar beam being not perpendicular to the face of the antenna. Now this is caused by variations in the transmitted magnetron frequency by the scanner. Now bearing errors are likely to be uh, less than 0.7 of a degree. This can be checked by performing a bearing calibration check once every four hours. Then we have the alignment which is caused by scanner not indicating true north when actually facing north. Once again you can check for this error by bearing calibration. Pulse amplitude provides a range error which is caused by the uneven shape of the returned echo. And this is probably the major cause of range error. Now if you look at the diagram here, it shows you how the ideal shape of an echo should be to get a good echo from the target, but seldom it is the case. So we then have the practical echo shape, uh, which provides some kind of an indication of how normally the shapes can be found at sea especially and what kind of echo or the strength of the echo that can be received from it once the radio waves goes and hits it. And then the third one you have a shape which gives an example of a weak echo shape. 
and it is just above the detection threshold that means the radar waves can actually go uh, above it or it can pass around it or pass through it and not actually detect a target because of its unusual shape because of which then the echo received back by the scanner uh, will not show a target on the radar screen which sometimes can be or rather sometimes uh, can be very dangerous for navigation purpose if you have a target in the vicinity and you are unable to detect it especially at night when you cannot even see it visually now the position of the target in the echo shape is along the center line of the echo at the leading edge so the operator can actually choose the leading edge or center of echo tracking with some of the arpas which are available in the market now the center of the echo will give a steadier vector display but it is not as accurate as a leading edge particularly for large targets if you are using the center of the target tracking then by using a longer pulse length will increase the error in the track information some large targets will show two echo centers particularly when the target changes its aspect with respect to the antenna so this diagram here is showing you the effect of change in aspect on the target echo shape as it changes its aspect how does it come across on the radar screen based on its aspect that it provides to the radar waves then we have quantization which refers to the range and error caused by the storage of measured range in a matrix grid with subsequent rounding off here the error increases as the range increases and uh, i'll show you how it happens uh, example showing you the target maneuvering and the target swap I'll, I'll talk about that and then you'll get an idea of what i mean so let's talk about target maneuvering here where the accuracy of tracked target information is uh, critically reliant on the target following a steady track now if the target starts to maneuver then it will take some time for the arpa to register that a change has taken place now in the next slide i'll show you the diagram uh, let me change this slide and show you the diagram in the diagram here it illustrates uh, how the there is a significant time lag between a target maneuvering and the change being registered on the arpa here the target course as determined by the arpa and the actual course the difference between that is being shown now here the target is turning through about 80 degrees with an angular velocity of 0.9 degrees now what this tells you is that uh, by by waiting 3 minutes after a maneuver the operator should then be confident that the arpa is now providing the track accuracy uh, up to the limitations of the system so the accuracy accuracy figures quoted in the arpa manuals and the arpa performance standard are for a target and not for maneuvering so if a target maneuvers too violently then it is possible for the target track to be lost a manual acquisition can be used to reacquire the target if necessary now remember that when own ship takes avoiding action the relative motion of the targets become a curve the vector will indicate the mean track prediction course and speed inputs will also vary from actual values during the maneuver operators must not try to interpret track target information during a maneuver you should wait for the maneuver to finish for the vessel to settle down so rather the ship must steady on a new course and speed for at least about 3 minutes before you can use the information about the target and assess whether there is a risk of collision or not then we have the target swap now having two targets within the one tracking window causes this target swap various scenarios can bring about target swap which include the following tracked target entering a cluttered area two tracked targets passing close to one another and a target or a track target passing a beacon or a buoy because of which there could be a confusion as to whether they are one or two targets the effect of a target swap is often unpredictable the track target may lose its vector or more commonly show an incorrect vector 
Another effect is that the vectors actually swap on the two track targets, which will give you the wrong information about each of the target. So the best defense against target swap is to make sure the tracking window is not set too wide, but this is not often possibly particularly with many RPAS. Also do not forget to place an EBL or electronic bearing line on the target that is of most concern to you in respect of collision risk. Irrespective of, of a target swap, a good operator will pick this up if trail function in the ARPA is used. We have talked about the trail function in a separate video. Please watch that video and you will know what it's all about. I'll stop the video here now. Thanks.